Right, we are here for episode two of the Bait Escapes, and we have come to the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Old Old Fisheries today, which is a, a bit of a favourite of mine and Jake's, but I don't know what bait he's given me. But before we come on to that, firstly, I've got to say thank you for all the support for the first video. It went down lovely catching all them skin bobs at Barston, and as well, we like that you gave us a few comments of potential venues to try down the line, so feel free to get in touch with any venues that you'd like us to try and even comment below with the type of bait. So keep it nice and simple. Please don't say anything daft like macaroni cheese and that, but keep it nice and simple with the baits that we could potentially use on them days out. But anyway, on to today and it's all changed. It's horrible, it's gone cold. Winter has officially ar arrived this week. So last week I was sat in my t-shirt catching carp shallow and now we're on the first week of October and everything's changed. Everything's gone cold and I'm well ready to go into hibernation. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to catch some fish today. So it all depends on what the bucket of love has in it. So we'll have a little look. As I say, we come to Old Huff. We're on Big Max Pool, which so it's a nice open water car play. Oh, sim oh, fairly open water. I've got about 35 metres to an island with some weird bars and things like that. So it's quite a technical venue, quite a tricky one to catch fish at this. So Jake might make it really easy for me or really hard for me. But we shall have a look and see what we've got. And as always, what I've got to do it's just make the most out of the bait in the bucket. Have a nice day's fishing, pretty much, out of a, a simple bait concoction. You know what I mean, keeping things nice and easy. So, what have we got? What have we got? You're horrible. What's all this? We've got some hemp. We've got a tin of hemp. Very random. I don't think I'm going to catch many roach on hemp prigs on here. But what's that going to have with it? And I've got some paste. Oh, I like that. So, that, that to me, combination is some paste fed with hemp. I like that. That keeps things nice and simple. It's probably a bit too chilly for that. So, it might be. A bit tricky to catch a load of big carpies on paste, but I'll have a think. There'll be something we can do with that to catch maybe little fish, maybe a little fish way of catching fish on paste. We'll have a little think of that. And lastly, ah, oh, at least you've been nice. At least you gave me something I'm familiar with. We've got a bag of Imperfect Six Mills. Just one bag as well. You've been stingy today, haven't you? That's it, look. And some, some of Jake's old worm mix or molehill soil or something. But anyway, very, very, very simple bait choices for today. Yeah, but give me plenty of options thinking about it. So I've got my paste, I've got a nice pole line, I'm going to fish with paste. And then with the six mils, they're the denser ones. The Fin Perfects are more of the carp type pellets instead of the pro feed ones. These are much better for, for your bomb fishing, for feeding at distance. So with them, I'm not going to be boring to fish a pole at 14 metres. I'm going to fish a waggler, but not a pellet waggler. I'm going to fish a waggler on deck to the island. So yeah. Nice simple bait choice, gives me lots of options. Potentially we can catch a few fish. I'm gonna go make some rigs up and we'll see how we get on. Right. Before we get into it, catching or hopefully catching some fishies, a bit of bait prep, and it's as pretty much as easy as it gets with what he's given me. My six mils are in the tub, the hemp's in the tub, all I've got to sort out to my paste. But I do want to go a little bit technical so with my paste, because I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know whether it's going to be a big lumpy carpy type paste. I don't think it is. It's got a bit cold for that. I think what I'm going to go down is the, the little fishy type paste route, but what I've also got to give myself is potentially something I can feed as well because it's no good for me just feeding the emp if I want to catch little fish. I need some bit of stinky, smelly, ground baity sort of thing in the water as well to catch some little fish. So what I'm going to do is mix up two types of paste, just to, for two consistencies of paste, to see what's going on. So firstly, we're going to get rid of my little free cup, which we're collecting them. The amount of free cups and method feeders I've got in my garage is ridiculous from this stuff. I match method mix. But what we're going to do quickly is measure it out. Say it's one to one, so whatever I put in of ground baity paste mix, that's where I'm going to put in enough water for the first batch. So I'm going to put two cups in that one. I'm going to put two cups in. I might put three in, we'll see how it goes. One, two cups of that. No, that's going to be plenty. And in that one, I'm going to put two cups as well. I'm going to have one and another one. So I've got to myself two different mixes there that I can dick about with just to get them right for whether I'm missing bites, whether I want it to stay on better, whether it starts getting windy just gives himself some versatility by not having one mix and I'm limited to using it in that form all the time. So with this one, what did I put in? Two cups. I'm going to put two cups of water in that one. And with this bad boy, 
I'm going to give it nearly three cups. Yeah, I'm going to go two and a half cups in that one. No, three cups. So a lot more in that one. And what that should give me, obviously it's not going to be right straight away once I give it a wiggle. It's got to absorb a lot of water first. But it'll give me one fairly dry mix that's going to be easier to ship out, that's going to stay on a bit better. It's just, if I'm waiting for bites, it's going to stay on my rig for a little bit longer. Whereas this one is going to be a proper sloppy job. That means I'll be able to strike through it a hell of a lot quicker. It won't stay on my hook as good, but it'll be more... For me, the, the sloppier the pace, the more efficient it is for hooking bites. But they've got to be coming fairly quickly, the bites, for that to happen. So there, they both look an absolute mess at the minute. But let them particles absorb everything up and within... What you're going to give me 10 15 minutes they'll not far off be right for how i want them so of course i've also got the versatility or the options of adding water to them throughout the day yeah for me paste is never a it's done that's the way it is all day it's definitely worth messing about with it because it, it can make a difference to hooking bites even getting bites in many occasions whether it's nice and sloppy and cloudy or whether you want a big lump so with two mixes like that it gives me two chances of getting it right because it might be a bit tricky to get a bite on it today i think Bait is pretty much all sorted. I'm just waiting for my paste to, to settle a little bit more. And my kit's ready. So let's say I'm going to keep things simple as well. That's my favourite thing. That I always say that, don't I? Keep things simple. But anyway, that's what we've done. And I've gone with a two-rod approach. And I've set a bomb up and I've set a waggle up. I really, really want to catch a load on a waggle on the bottom. But while setting up, the wind's got up a bit and it doesn't look anywhere near as sexy as it did half an hour ago. But we're still going to try. That's going to be my main... My main approach, I'd love to catch a few on it, on a big long waggler on the bottom ideally. So that's going to be what I use my six mils for. I'm going to just ping an odd air pellet towards the island, see if I can catch on the wag. Secondly, I'm actually going to feed two lines on my bomb. I'm also going to feed a three quarter line sort of thing. That again, I've got the option of throwing a waggler over, but mainly that's going to be my bomb line. I'm going to feed that a bit heavier to give me an area to chuck a bomb just in case that wing gets up a little bit too nasty. And then lastly, I'm going to fish short on paste. And what I said with the paste, I think it's too selective to go down there. Big lumps of paste, fishing for carp approach. I mean, it's flipping freezing. There's a chance we're not going to catch a carp until very, very, very late on. And if the waggler and the bomb fails because of that reason as well, then I need an option to catch some little fish. I mean, there's loads and loads of big F1s and more importantly, lots and lots of skin bobs in here as well. Some proper ones as well, some big albreem as well in here. So that's going to be my target on my short line. So because of that, I'm going to feed a nice mix of a big load of hemp I'm going to put a pot of hemp in to start just to give them some stinkiness on the bottom, some attraction. And over the top of that, I'm going to feed me harder paste, me, me drier paste. I'm just going to crumble that up into almost like a, a ground bait sort of form. And I'm just going to feed sort of a, a stodgy pot of that over the top. But that's going to be left. I mean, paste for me is one of the few baits that you, you need to sort of feed it and leave it. It's a, you need a bit of bait on the bottom. For the way I'm going to fish it for skimmers, you need a bit of a volume of bait on the bottom. So that is what I'm going to start with. I'm going to go straight in now, cup at the ready, and give it a big one on that short line. And I'm going to give it, like I say, a decent pot of hemp, probably half a pot of hemp in there. And on top of that, I'm just going to feed some a bit of stodge, pretty much. That's going to break down very, very quickly. Pretty much no different to feeding a ball of ground bait, but it allows me to fish the same thing as what I'm feeding on the hook. And we're just going to dump him in. Nice and short. I'm not a fan of fishing pace long, a bit too fiddly for me. So we're just going to go seven metres and dump it in there. And say so with them sort of baits, they're going to stay on the bottom pretty well because they're nice and heavy. And that's quite important on this place because it's a right toey venue, this. It pulls all over the place. So hopefully that should stay where we're fishing it. Also, what I've done, I've fed that in a silty bit. So I always like feeding paste in. It's sort of a silty fix. If you've got a silty peg, flat bottom, open water lake, often the silt's all over the place. Paste is a great bait for them to pick out of. I mean, they often fizz up. It's, it's the one bait that you can have a messy, fizzy, horrible peg and you can still get bites because you've got such a big, visible, smelly up bait. It's easy for them to find, unlike with pellets and things like that. So I'm happy feeding that on me, on me silty, stodgy area. My other lines, however, really, really simple. All I'm going to ping is the island where we're fishing the waglet is just within reach. As long as I put the pellets up in the air a little bit to get a bit of wind behind the back. I'm just about able to feed them six mils nice and tight to that far bank right where I want, right where I want to feed them. So I'm not going to feed many, we're just going to ping six or seven over that every now and again. Just a bit of, bit of noise in the area, if anything else. 
So I don't want to build a peg up. Yeah, when I'm fishing to that far bank, it's just about picking an odd fish off. I'm not going to catch a million pounds because they're coming to me bait. You know, it's really shallow. It's just not right over there. The fish don't feed tight to the island on this lake. So the main area where they're going to rock up and feed is on my bomb line that I'm going to feed three quarters of the way across, which I'm going to feed much heavier. I'm going to feed that with a, two lots of probably about 20, just into that dark spot when I've got him marked up. We're going to feed it there. So a nice heavy two lots of 20, like I say. Probably two thirds of the way across. And what you've got here, you've got halfway across the lake, about 14, 15 meters. It comes up and it's a bar. Well, not a bar, it's a, what is it? It just comes up, so it's a lot shallower from 14 and a half meters onwards. And because of that, it's a lot harder as well. And the fish love being over there. I mean, it's probably about four foot, four and a half foot here. On top of the bar, you've probably got about three foot, but a much harder bottom, which makes the fish easier to catch with a bit of luck. So that's it, meet me traps are set. What I've got to do is wang this waggler over and see if I can get a few bites on that to start with. So to start off, I'm going to go to waggler because I'm actually very, very, very excited about having a chuck on this. I think it's probably up there with my favourite methods in the world is fishing pellets on the bottom to an island. It's just a lovely way of fishing. I mean, dead excited when that float goes under. The only thing that may spoil it is the wind. I think that could be an issue today. It's going to pull through a little bit fast. But what I've done because of that, so I've plumbed up, really, really simple. I've got a number five waggler on, shotted Andy May Styley with a load of number eights, which give me a bit of versatility to take some shots off if I need to. I've got a big, long 18 inch hook length and two number tens down my line. So it's a very, very slow fall. But what you find is by using nice little delicate insert wagglers, or not delicate, but by using insert wagglers, when you're using pellets on the hook in six or eight mil, it's great because it's, like it's like having a BB, I suppose, on the end of your hook. I've caught me net already. But by having that big heavy weight on your hook, that'll anchor on the bottom. And even when it's pulling in the wind, it'll sort of tighten my rig up. So I end up with a nice tight rig and my pellet will actually show up on my bristle with a bit of luck. And that way I'll be tight. I'll see bites when they happen quicker. And hopefully the wind won't move it through my peg too much. But let me impale him from my keep net. And then that is going to be our first go. So I've pinged a few pellets over there, not many at all. I've probably fed about 20 pellets in that sort of area. The wind couldn't be any worse. So I'm just going to ping a couple in the area. So it, it's about going to where the fish are this. It's not building a peg or anything like that. It's just chucking it to where they may be. And what I've done, I've clipped up probably three, four foot short of that island. So let's see if we can wang it over there. There's a big carpet down middle end. Let me wang him over there. Oh. Better. It's very shallow because that pellet isn't registering for quite a while until now. And it just slows down slightly like it's just catching then. It is very, very shallow there. I've probably got six, eight inches of line before it starts tightening up. I missed one then. That was another bite, wasn't it? It's going to be all right, this. A few fishies about, I think. It'd be amazing if that wind would just ease off a fraction. So I'm not fussy about having wind. I think a bit of wind's a very good thing. I'm going to take a little bit off that way there. So I keep just clipping the veg. So if I just take another half a turn off that, that should be perfect. So clipping up on a waggler's not ideal, but it's all right because I'm chucking to an island. So technically, they can't go anywhere. They can only go left and right. And if I need a panic and have to unclip, then we can do so. So, good to go, just check that. I'm a little bit worried that my hook may be a little bit small, but I'm gonna start with an, eight, an 18 and see what that's like. Very angry heron in the background. Yeah, I'm gonna start with an 18. And if we need a big one on, put a 16 on, then we shall do so. So I'm trying not to sink my line just yet, because I don't want to draw it too far off that far bank. The tighter it is into that cover, the better chance I've got of getting a bite. That was a perfect example then of it tightening up. It probably moved 10 inches that float before it started tightening up to me bait. 
So I've definitely got quite a bit of an allowance on that rig, but it doesn't matter because it is moving so quick. We're tightening up to that waggler really, really quick, or the line is of its own accord, but it's still giving me what? I'm getting 30 seconds to a minute of fishing before it pulls it just too fast. So obviously there's a limit to this. If the wind gets up too much and it starts flying through, it ain't gonna happen, I might as well bin it off. But while it's the way it is now, I can just about hold it enough to get, say, that 30 seconds to a minute of decent presentation before it needs chucking again. And that can be enough. You often find that all your bites regularly come within 20, 30 seconds. So really, it's about perfect, that. Let's keep chucking him over. Didn't like how that landed. That pellet landed a bit close to me float, so I don't know if something happened on the way in then. Let's see, as long as it tightens up and holds, I'll know it wasn't in, in a tangle, it went in all right. But if it moves through really quickly, straight away, see, it's just my float looks a little bit lower that time. So I think something got tangled on the way in then. Oh, maybe not. So it's a lovely, busy way of fishing, isn't it? Instead of just sitting there watching a bomb or watching the end of a rod. So it's a lovely, busy way of fishing. Same again, just six pellet. So they're not anywhere near as tight as I'd like them to be. But it's only got to be an odd pellet in the vicinity. That's all I'm after. It's really getting up now. Beautiful. See, while that line's sort of coming down, I just try and give it a little flick just to get it straight on the water. So I'm never going to be able to, to sink it. Did that go then, Jakey? I'm sure that went then. Bit, the light's a bit crappy. It does feel very good, like there's quite a few fishies over there. Oh, beautiful. See, if I try and flick it then, I probably drew that off. That went straight away. Again, yeah, this is a bit smaller. Oh, that is going lovely. It's a lovely, active way of fishing. I'm proper, proper excited, isn't it? Like I said before, I'm fishing quite light as well though. I've only got, I've got four pound mainline on, which is nice and light, it's only 016, so I can cast that fairly light waggler nice and accurately. And then I've only got a, an 18 hook to 015 hook length. So everything's nice and light and, do you know what I mean? Geared to around, getting me as many bites as possible. It's a big F1, this, I think. And a little car. At the same time, mega, mega enjoyable. and patient with them. I don't want to drag anything in today because we don't want to lose too many if we can help it. Oh, what's he come off then? So you often find that here is that you catch carpies across, like tight across, proper carp, and then when you come off that's where you're more likely to catch the, the big skimmers and F1s, but that is a beautiful start. You like that? Hopefully, there are many, many more waiting to be caught. Well, after, what's he going to be? Probably 45 minutes, an hour on the waggler, which is phenomenal. Jake's come and took it off me. We won't let me catch any more on that. We've got to do something different, apparently. But that said, it is starting to pull through a little bit too fast. So it is time 
to chuck a bomb over the top. That's going to be my next post goal. But before I do so, we're going to top that pole line up with a bit more bait because they've definitely been on it. Like I said, I deliberately fed it over the, the silty stodgy bit because it gives me a visual sort of aid to let me know whether there's fish on the, on the line or not by the bubbles that I'm getting. And they definitely came on it, fizzed it up twice. They've really came on it and fizzed it up. And I can they cleared it out because I've not seen any bubbles on that for a good 15, 20 minutes. So I'm going to feed exactly the same again. I mean, half pot of emp, half pot of stodgy ground bait. And that's going to be good to go for in what? Half hour's time, after I've had a quick couple of fish on the bomb with a bit of luck, we're going to go on this and catch a few silver fish with a bit of luck. Some breams is what we're hoping for on this line, but we'll have to wait and see. We shall have to wait and see. So next thing, as I say, is a bomb. Let's get that away so we don't take anyone out. And I've gone like quite girly on my bomb in it. I've not put the usual big hook, big pellet sort of thing that I'd usually go for because I've not got any eight mils. Because it's a six mil, I've just gone with a nice little, a little 14 hook direct on a band. I mean, it's basic as it gets. It's with a what, a 12 inch hook length with a little 10 gram bomb. 10 gram, 10 ounce. No, what is it? It's 10 gram, isn't it? 10 ounce would be about like house brick. What is it? No, 10 gram bomb. And that's just going to go over the top of my waggler line. So hopefully just to keep it a bit stiller on the bottom, see if I can get some bites on that. But the amount of times I've done this, it's amazing that you think, oh, I'm getting bites pulling through on a waggler, a bomb will be better. So many times it's not. It's as if they like that falling through the water. It's as if they like the movement. But still, Jakey's made me come off it, so we've got to. So I'm going to launch a bomb right over the top of where we were catching that. Go with that, that way in love letter and see what happens. It's my first chuck, so that line's going to be a bit trickier to sink. So I've gone with a nice little bomb, so you can get there. It's nice and flat. It's not too, oh, it's not, um, it's not steep at all over there. So I'm happy with my bomb sticking on the bottom. I'm not going to go heavier to anchor it. And the wind's not too bad to make it move. So at first, because there's some F1s here as well, we often find with a bomb and F1s, that a lighter bomb and a longer hook length's best, which the mind boggles why that can be better. Normally you'd think a little bit of the hook length with a self fucking bomb would be better when F1s are involved, but because they're moody buggers, sometimes it's not. But what I'm going to give it, there was a lot of bites on the waggler. I felt like there were loads of fish there. It was phenomenal. <laughs> I was loving it. But this will just tell me how many fish are, are on the bottom. So what you don't have with a bomb, is you're not searching that peg that you do with a waggler, even though it, it's moving and it's not ideal it moving, but it does, it just almost searches the fish out in your peg because you're covering, do you know what I mean, that much per cast. With a bomb, it's just a different form of presentation. It's not as exciting on, on days like this. It can be a bit tricky to, to get a bite. I've just been done. Don't like getting done. We've just done a video with Winning Ways about that, about that. And that means a fish had it in its mouth, sucked it, spat it. I didn't catch a fish. One got away with it. And if that happens again, I'll shorten my hook length and I'll increase my bomb size. But we'll give it benefit of the doubt for one more cast. So we're chucking it nice and tight. So you have to be careful chucking a bomb to islands like this, is that you're not chucking on rubbish. Like when the, the islands aren't cut back, when it's all nice, lovely vegetation on them. Quite often there's a bit of debris on the bottom in them situations. So with your bomb, it's important to have a look at your, your hook every time you bring it in, see if there's any muck on it. And if there is, it's often worth chucking a little bit closer to you, not chucking it tight, because it, it's not like throwing a feeder where you, your bait's sort of protected. Because you've just got, oh, that'll be on, because you've, <laughs> you've just got your hook bait and nothing else. It's very easy, it can get covered in dirt, but obviously it didn't on that cast. This is amazing today. That's another proper and on the bomb. Oh, the pull in today, they're very angry. I had one do me on the waggle actually get into the clip, and this one's very close to doing the same, I think. Yeah, we got him, we got him. Yes, we've got him this way. 
to all this. I reckon I've fed a hundred pellets at the minute. We've fed hardly anything over there because the fish definitely aren't in a chewing mood. I've not seen any signs over where I fed really heavy on the bomb. No bubbles that you'd expect to see a few of. Everything today, I was just talking to Jake about it, wants to be, see there's one tight in the back then, wants to be in the shallowest water possible because it's rained. It's rained really, really heavy the last couple of days. And so it's just on the turn of it going flipping freezing. And it's as if everything's come out of the deeper water. They want to be in the, the shallowest water of the lake and islands, if there is one, is very much where they want to be at the moment. It was the same on a match I was on yesterday. Lovely carps. Beautiful. So we're going to carry on, catch a few on a bomb before it's time for another skimmer or carp pasting. Come here. Perfect in the bottom lip, that one. They're all a lovely stamp, they're all like five, six pounds a piece. Nice patience, addering up fish. So what I'm gonna do before we go back in this time, let's feed a little bit of bait. It's important I get a bit more bait now that I am chucking a bomb. I want a bit more bait located when I'm chucking, rather than it being really sparsely scattered all over the place. So I'm gonna put 10 in there. And then we're just going to feed two lots of sort of 10 pallets. That's better. Just a bit more accurate. I mean, I've got to be fishing over something now. So I'm not searching them fish out like I was in the, with a the waglar. Just check that. No, nope, don't like that. No, I do like that. That's all right. Let's have a look. Lovely and tight, we're probably as tight as we were with the waggler. I'm going to carry on with this and try and pick off a couple before we see some signs on that. That's going to be my next indicator of what I'm going to do is as soon as I see my next fizz on my pace line that we've just topped up, then we're going to have a look on that and just see what's there to be caught, whether it's the right fish, whether we can catch a load or whether the island is the place to be today. We is on, so it has been, <laughs> it's mega. I don't want to come off this. Can I just keep catching carp, please, Jakey? Please. But no, back on a bomb, and it's not as exciting as the waggler, and not as good, but we're still catching fish on bomb. We've had what? Four fish? Five fish on bomb? So nice, steady, patient, and we're coming back with a fish by feeding real minimal bait. I mean, I'm still only feeding 10 to 20 pellets every go. Just take that clutch up a bit. And it is lovely and lovely and steady, but we've seen lots of fizz. There's a little bit of fizzing going on now on the on the old pace line. So I think with 20 odd pounds, oh, there's a cat. Tell you what has just happened as well. A carp's just swam away from deeper water. I didn't feel like there were any carp in deeper water, but there was definitely one there then. So maybe, like especially that now, that fizzing, I'm going to try and not let this fish go through my pace line. And that's definitely the next port of call is to see what we can catch on that because. As lovely as this is, we need a bit of variety and we need to use all of the bait we've been given instead of just a hundred pellets. So I'm going to crank this one in. All that lovely old hoof carobs. 
They're all very lively today. And then we're going to have a quick go on the paste. Let's see what is lurking about, I think. That's lovely. So that, that bomb seems right today, a nice little light one. I think when it is flat at this time of year, when it's going a bit moody, they can just be a bit susceptible to being upset by a big old crash of a big lead going in. So although the bites are not quite as positive as a result, it's a little bomb day today. Which is six mil pellets, often the case. So, rods away and time. Let's have a little look on that paste. So I feel like I may have left it a little bit too long because there's been some fizzing and the fizzing's almost calmed down a little bit. Let's get my rod dressed out the way. Yeah, the fizzing's calmed down a little bit. So whether I've missed my window, in fact, what I'm gonna do, is just put a go on it, so I don't have to cup any bait in when I fish it, is just give it a pinch of hemp and a little tiny bit of crushed up ground bait, not a lot. Little tiny bit, just to give them a little homing in point before I go on it. it might get me a bite a bit quicker then. Put that in there. So not a lot of bait at all, but enough to clamp them down a bit. And we're going to get our paste rig on. I've got a cup on. I'm going to get rid of him. So I'm going to try and not feed other than with a big pot. And this one, really, really basic. But I've gone with not traditional pasty, styly floats and that. I've gone with me normal Timmy Moore's Carbon Slims because I'm not fishing big, silly paste. So something with a a sensible bristle, a 1.5 mil bristle, that's going to be enough for me to see what's going on. A bit of water on that. So he's shotted, very similar to how we do things all the time. Soft pellety, styly, I'm going to say, just with spread out number eight all the way through the rig. But we've got a big hook on. We've got a 14 on, which for me, that's massive. But I'm just going to put, see, it's crazy how much that's towing. Even that little bit of bait I put in then, the toes half a metre away from where I put the bait. So long our way. So I'm going to start with my stiffer pace, slightly stiffer pace, see what's going on. And I've got it plumbed up to the bottom of my body and my float. So as long as they haven't ripped it out by fizzing up and, and ripping the silt out, that should sit perfect. But I've put enough paste on to overshot my float because that'll let me know what is going on. And what I'm going to do is just ship out with it dangling. I'm like a bit of no faff. I'll plonk all that in and just see what happens. This is my first cast, so it's often you could have a little play with it to see what happens first cast. So that's, I may take a little bit of shot off that. Yeah, a little bit of depth off that rather. See how we pulled it down so it goes nice and low? Beautiful. I'm just going to keep on pulling just to see how tight I need to be to make it sink. Why is my back shot sinking? Sink that, you bugger. Here we go. That's better. Now I can pull it nice and tight. And see how my pace is now registering on my bristle. I've had to pull that quite a long way for it to do that. So when I come in, I'm going to take 10 mil off the, off the depth. But by doing that, I can always maintain a tight line between me, me bait and me, me float bristle, which I'm babbling on about all the time. So lots of little indications. There's definitely fish there. What they are, I don't know. And I suppose that's the key thing with, with the owl paste on the hook is that to be efficient, it's striking at the right indications. It's no good being like Zorro and whacking it at every little dip and movement of your float. I'm just going to end up foul looking and catching nothing, shipping in and out with paste on all the time, with no bait on rather. So instead, I'm going to be nice and patient and wait for a decent clonk. See, I thought we'd have had one already, but maybe not. Might all be eating hemp. You have to show me how to hook a piece of hemp, Jake. It's been a while. I don't think it goes well on a size 14. Hemp, though, does it? It doesn't look quite right. Oh, oh a little bit of an indication then. I'm just going to tighten that lazy a little bit. But the sign. So, what I'm going to do is not bother unshipping my pole. There's no need to unship it. So it makes it far easier for me and less jaggedy for me to go in with my pole stuck together. Less chance of me bait coming off. 
which is for me. I'll always fish pace short because of that. I'm trying to make it into a nice little triangle as well, so it, I imagine it like sits on the bottom dead nice. So we'll go in, have a little look at that, see what's going on. It should be. Perfect. I'm happy. There's definitely some fish in the area. I've got bubbles regularly and it's not constant bubbles, so it doesn't feel like it's too silty. There's just enough bubbles for me to feel that there's fish present rather than they've just ripped it all up to pieces. So I'll tell you what I did forget to do then. I forgot to take a little bit of depth off, but we'll give it one more cast and I'm going to pull on it again with my back shot. Just so my float goes nice and low, just so I'm happy with it. Just to tighten it all up. So having that slightly thinner bristle than normal, yeah boy, having that thinner bristle than normal allows that to happen without too much buoyancy to pull my bait out the, out the paste. So a thinner bristle can be very beneficial. We've got a skin bob, we're going to swing him. Yeah, we're going to swing him. The slippery skin bob. It's like being back at Barston, isn't it? Catching them. Oh, that's a bit of colour. Bit of colour to the net. So I'm liking that. Now, all I need to judge it now is when to feed. That's probably the trickiest thing with paste. And my honest answer would be either when we stop getting bites or when you stop seeing signs. Yeah, if they're not fizzing, there's no fish left in your peg, you need to feed something to attract them back in. But if that fizzing's still going on, which at the minute, there's a few bubbles still there, then I'm more than happy to carry on until I feel it, it needs a bit more bait. But you've got to remember, I always like a bit of paste in it. The thing I like with paste is that you're always topping your peg up. Even when you have a bite, I don't think they eat it all sometimes, and there's always just a bit of a bit of smell, a bit of ground bait, a bit of whatever in your peg, just to keep them happy, even when you're not feeding anything, just as long as you're fishing it. So we'll carry on with this and see if things change. So the only thing I might change as well is if I'm catching skimmers that big, because it feels like there's lots of my peg, it's moving about quite a lot, me. Go on. Oh, moving about quite a bit is I'll just, first I'll change the size of my paste. I'm just going to put a Little diddy six to eight mil pellet on. So it's not very big at all, but I'm still on the stiffer paste. So if I keep missing bites like that, I'll try the, the floppier paste. Just to see if they suck it up a little bit better and I can strike through it a little bit better. It's that angry heron again, Jake. Very angry him. And seeing again that thin bristle helps with a little bit of paste in it even though it's as small as it is it still registers on float so i think the only time for me i'd step up to a bigger angrier pasty type float is when great big bits for carp or if the wind dictated so the wind can very much can dramatically affect the way your paste behaves or the way your rig works when you're using paste because if you get a big toe on it and of course it can be quite tricky to keep it where you want it. That was beautiful, that one, eh? Beautiful. We're going to net this one and be well behaved. What is he? It's a skin bob again. It's a weird one. Over the years we've done this quite a few times, fishing paste for skimmers. And it's amazing how easy they can be to catch on paste when they can be an absolute nightmare on everything else. I think they can get very clever and work out how to feed on ground bait often when you're feeding it. And of course, the only way of putting that on the hook is to get some paste out. That looks a bit bigger, doesn't it? Whatever's fizzing in my peg now. Maybe a cap. So it's nice and easy to be selective on this in that all I need to do if I feel there's big fish in my peg is put a bigger lump of bait on. Well, I don't need to change anything other than size of my hook bait, which makes it very versatile and very, very simple. So that's got to be a bigger fish, hasn't it? That looks more substantial, whatever's bubbling on that now. Let's see, it's been nice and patient. So after fishing pellets, where you're responding to most of the indications you get, paste a right bugger for me. All I want to do is strike. What you really do is like bream fishing, innit? Old school bream fishing. You have to wait for tip to go round, lad. 
Same with this in it. Nice and patient and only strike when you think it's on or your pace come off and then you might as well whack it anyway. So at the minute, it's going all right. The only thing we are getting is a few little indications that make me think there's lots of little tiny fish in my peg, but I don't feel like the indications are fish touching my bait. That is the one thing. Paste is the ultimate bait for magnifying fish presence in your peg. Because every time one wafts your line or swims past your paste and just disturbs it a little bit, you see an indication on your float, which can, it's often what leads to all them missed bites that you associate with it. So just having belief that your bait's still on and only striking at them. Decent movements. I mean, float's moving non-stop with little wobbles and I mean, I'm not sure what that is, whether that's little diddy fish or whether it's just a stamp of fish in it in my peg that they are that small. They're not nailing it as quick as we'd hope. But I'll carry on for a little while and see how it develops. So the paste, it's been good, but it's just, it's not right, if I'm honest. We've just been having a chat, and definitely the issue is at the minute, is that venues everywhere at the minute, it was exactly the same for my match yesterday, and we've had a lot of rain with it going cold, and I honestly feel that all the bigger fish, all the carp and F1s, are over there. They all want to be in the shallowest water possible, not in the deepest bit where that cold water has gone down to. That said, still loads, I thought there was a frog there then, I don't know what that was. That said, still loads of bites to be had and I feel we've done it right by fishing it oh we're gonna get one fishing it in the way that I have done micro paste I mean little mini pea pasty style fishing instead of big lumps at least it still gives you that option of catching a few fish so these fish little skimmers like this can be the notoriously most difficult fish to get bites off I mean easy to get into your peg but really difficult to get bites off and it's sort of been right for it I mean there's not millions I can catch one every two or three minutes pretty much which is nice and steady and an easy way of building a weight but if i'm honest the most enjoyable bit today is by far that waggler across that has been absolutely phenomenal today and if i was here on my own i'd have been sat here all day with a bag of pellets i'd, I'd fish here till my heart's consent it was phenomenal catching them fish on the bomb and waggler across but other than that it's been a lovely day's fishing and hopefully we've got the most out of it a nice quick three hour session but still caught plenty of fish with a minimal limited amount of bait, which is the, what this is all about, having to play with different baits and making them as versatile as possible, seeing what we can catch. So I think what I'm going to do is nail one last one on this with a bit of luck. And then it's time to whiz that net out and have a little look at what we've caught. Yeah. Well, that is just a little handful of what we've had today. It has been, it's been phenomenal. I mean, I rocked up this morning and expected a really, really negative. I mean, we might have caught 30 pounds. I thought it was going to be freezing, really, really hard to catch, but it's been the complete opposite. I think it's definitely helped us that rain coming or being here the last couple of days. I reckon it stacked all the fish on that island. That's why that method has definitely been, been key today. It's definitely been the most productive. So paste is nice catching a few fish, but just not right. I mean, with the conditions, it's becoming that time of year when the fish are where they want to be. But other than that, a phenomenal day's fishing here at Old Duff. Really, really enjoyed that. It's probably the best day I've ever had on uh, Big Macs, to be honest. But aside from that, so please feel free to give us any suggestions of venues and bait, of course, but please be gentle, because winter's coming. But any suggestions you may have, please give us a shout, put them in the comments below, and we will see you on the bank very, very soon.